Happy Friday! Welcome to another Craft Night with Friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, uh, for about an hour, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So thanks again for joining me. We have taken our embroidery of the month, the scaredy cat little kitties, and we are turning it into a tote bag and we decided to make it a striped tote bag last night too. It's a little beetle juicy. So this is the front panel. We are going to sew that uh, embroidery on as a pocket. Uh, all of our other pieces are cut um, except for the handles. So we're gonna sew this all together tonight plus do the handles. I'm hoping we can finish this. I think that's gonna be the plan. Uh, so thanks again for joining me. Let's get going. All right, so here is where we left off last night. We have our front panel and I have pinned the uh, pocket to it. We've already added like kind of a lining color, this bright orange for the pocket. So it's pinned and just ready to sew on. And uh, we made a back panel. We, uh, we uh, sewed these stripes last night. And then I have this cute little orange with kitty cats on, kitty cat dots for the lining. So there's lots of different ways to make these, these uh, tote bags. This is just one. Uh, so if you see another one online somewhere, that one's okay too. There's lots of different ways to do this. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start tonight by sewing around the edge there. Okay, let's head to the machine. How about saving the yellow cat fabric? Oh, for the splendid sampler. So I'm I I'm not using any of my fabrics, uh, my penguin and fish fabrics in the splendid sampler too. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's all kind of scrap fabric. Um, yeah, I mean I have tons of this, tons of this or, or of this like kitty cat fabric left over, this orange. So I think. We could bring a little bit of it, of it in. So I can kind of see the orange edge here. I'm just gonna try and get my stiletto and kind of tuck it under a little bit, just so you don't see it as much on the front here. But if you see it a little, I don't care. It's cute. Ooh, got my little garden. <laughs> I keep a little piece of fabric uh, to help protect my motor, my pulley wheel from getting dented and I forget to take it out sometimes. All right, I need to help it along for a few stitches with the stiletto, just because um, it's kind of thick here and it wasn't grabbing quite right. Ooh, dang, I need it going backwards here too. Ooh, hopefully this isn't a total disaster tonight sewing-wise. You know, I didn't change the needle like I was going to after the splendid sampler, so, ugh, I gotta remember to do that stuff. All right, I'm just I'm just pushing that orange back a little bit again, going a little bit on the edge, and then pushing that orange just so I can't see the edge there. It's just a little detail. I probably don't need to putz around with that, but it's fine. I'm doing it. So I'm just pushing it. And sewing a little. Just got to make sure that I'm not actually pushing this background fabric. I don't think I am. Because I don't want to make, I don't want to like make a pucker. All right, needle down. I'm going to rotate a little. So there's our first uh, seam right there. So we got the start of a pocket, yay. All right, let's help it along here. Ooh, and then let's tuck, tuck, tuck this edge up there. So this bottom edge is also where we're, um, this is where we turn the pocket right side out. So we're going to be closing that just from the act of sewing this down. So actually I can, oh, I'm not, not to the hole quite yet there. Little pin. 
there, here's, here's our hole. Just pushing, pushing that orange in a little bit. All right, I'm currently closing that hole up. So I'm just lifting up the foot a little bit to rotate. Um, I can actually remove a pile of these pins now. I have the pins set a little further back um, just so I can keep sewing without pulling out pins constantly. So that's been working. You know, this one doesn't have too much of that orange popping out the side, so I'm just gonna sew. Let's add a little back tack here, just going backwards a few stitches. Oh there, that worked better than the other side. All right, that's it. Let's take this off the machine and we got ourselves a finished pocket. All right, let's snip all these little bits. I'm gonna snip the two threads from the front first, and um, then I'm going to flip it around. Oh, let's get rid of that pin. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to kind of pull, pull a little bit on these back threads and I'll, that'll help pull the, those front threads to the back and we're going to just snip those away too. All right, so there is our uh, front. We got our little pocket there. That's perfect if you just want to throw a scissors or you know this is gonna be like a like a trick-or-treat bag so you could throw your little extra candies that you're just totally saving for yourself <laughs> would fit in there a few little snickers bars right um but yeah i think that's really cute and then you get this pop of that pop of orange here so all right at this point we have our front and back and linings completely done uh so this is going to be for the the, the handles, so we're gonna deal with that green later. But now, so this is where it kind of veers um, with different different patterns. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it tonight is I'm going to sew the front piece to a lining piece, and then the back piece to the other lining piece. So we're gonna just sew on the top edge of both of that. So if you have directional fabric, this kind of, um, you have tossed and directional fabric. So tossed fabric is where you can kind of have it at any angle and you can't really tell which is up or down. Whereas a directional, like right now our, our um, front is directional, meaning that there's a clear top. Like this is a clear top and clear bottom because uh, we want our, our piece upright. So that's like with a pattern. If all the characters on it are all um, going in one direction and you flip the fabric and it's going in a different direction, then it's, then it's directional. Um, so I want to put the ups, like the top of the direction. So this is the top of the piece. I, and then uh, same with the inside. If you're using fabric that is directional, make sure the top, the two tops are touching. So that's what we're going to go for. Right now, like I said, this is tossed, so it doesn't really matter, but um, you will uh, need to have both tops touching if that's the case. So I'm going to flip these over and I'm going to sew just right down the line here. And I think I might get my clips out again because this is a large, a long kind of piece here. I'm just going to throw a clip or two in just to make sure we're keeping everything aligned. So I'm just going to put one kitty scratching the top, just scratching the top of the fabric to move it just a hair so things line up the edges. There we go. I think that'll, that'll do. Okay, so I'm just going to sew down this edge and then we're going to do the same thing with our back piece. Okay. To the machine.
I suppose. Let's let's start with our little leader here. Oh, where'd it go, my la little leader? Yeah. Oh, it's on my lap here. <laughs> there we go. So this will allow me just to jump to the fabric easily without having the big long strings and having to back tack and all that. So there we go. I'm not. Am I lined up here? I gotta check this out again. Yep, okay, good enough. So right sides together. Ooh, this is a long seam compared to what I typically do here. And again, I'm kind of banking on that I have enough bobbin thread. <laughs> uh, when I checked yesterday, it seemed like we'd have enough for this whole project, but I have to check real close when we're done with this just to make sure we have enough. All right, so I'm going to leave that on the machine for a second while we prep um, the second piece. All right, so again, this is actually kind of directional at this point because I want the purple at the top because that's what we had here. I want the pur I want all these stripes to line up on the front and the back. So the purple is going to be my top, uh, and then this again is is not directional. So I'm just going to plop it there. Let's flip right sides together, and let's give myself some clippies here. edges all right there we go I feel like I need one well yeah we're fine all right I'm gonna grab that So next up, I'm going to press these, uh, and I'm going to press them with an open seam, I think. Just because I'm not quite sure which way to press them, so let's just press it open. All right, let's see what we got. All right, I got my iron heated up. So this is what we should have now. We should have like two really long pieces um, with the lining attached to the front. Well, that that one's the back, um, and then kind of the same same deal here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just press these seams really quickly, and that is the deal. Hey everyone, just checking on comments here. All right, so I'm going to press the seam to one side first, and then I'm going to press it to the other way so it stands up straight, and then I will press it open. And I think let's just get it from the front too. Ah, pretty. Okay, that, that one's good to go. Let's grab the second piece. Gosh, it's funny to me how, how large these pieces are. I'm so not used to working <laughs> with big pieces of fabric. We do so much uh, like little tiny things here that whenever it bumps to like bigger than eight inches, I get thrown. My space becomes very small at that point. All right, so the method we're using here to do the, uh, um, the lining 
is so we don't have to like tuck the top in and then sew around in a circle perfectly. Um, some some patterns are like that. This kind of avoids that. All right. So we have our two pieces here. Next up, I am going to lay the front onto the back. We're gonna just lay these completely flat, like so. And uh, the lining pieces will be touching and the front and back pieces will touch be touching. What we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna sew all the way around the whole entire thing and then we're gonna leave a gap um, right here where we, where we turn it right side out in the lining. So that's the plan here. So I wanna really clip these well though because I want these top, this top seam or where they, where they both meet, I want that, those, that to be just perfect. I want those seams to just perfectly match up. So let's throw a clip there. And I actually want every single one of these stripes to match up as well as they can as well. Um, so let's, that's where I'm gonna put my clips is all on this seam matching. I'm gonna do my best to keep them match. So let's go around the edge and I'll put some around the bottom and I'll put some on these edges too, but these are the for sures. Theoretically, it should just line up if we measured and sewed okay, but you know, that's always a question mark, how well we do that. Yeah, so far so good. I think I'm gonna actually go to the other side and clip all these edges and then I'll go back to the easy edges. There we are. Rotate around. Line up all these buggers. So we are working on a blog post for this. So when we're done doing, um, making this, I will have instructions. Uh, it won't be immediate, but uh, it should be relatively quick. We'll have instructions on how to do this. Like, you know, I'm making up the measurements and stuff as I go here. Uh, we'll have the actual <laughs> measurements that I end up using here uh, written down and in a way you can follow. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be doing a blog post of, of this project. If you wanna turn your embroidery into like a little trick or treat bag as well. All right, there, I got my main seams all lined up. Now I'm just am putting a couple, oh geez, I can't grab it. There we go, on, on these edges. Maybe one at the top and the bottom. And then let's get get this the lining as well. Let's line that up. Oh, this clipping, this is what takes the time, doesn't it? I think I only need maybe one in the middle here. So let's do the other side. edges to meet. Uh, that's, uh, Gina's asking, shouldn't I have I sewn the handles in first? That's one way of doing it. We could have sewn the handles into the seam uh, before doing it this way. The way I'm doing the handles is going to be where they're on the outside, so where they're, they're super visible on the outside and you sew those little squares through it. So I think it'll be a little bit more sturdy and I just think it's kind of cute that way. So yeah, there's all sorts of ways. I guess a simpler way might have been to sew them in. But we're gonna sew this whole thing first like it's a bucket and then we'll 
then we'll add the handles separately after. All right, now here is where I need to leave an opening. All right, so I just have to remember. <laughs> so I'm gonna start here now and go all the way around and we will end up here and then I can turn it the whole thing right side out through this hole. So that is what we are going for here. To the machine. Ooh, hello, nice to see you. Okay, nice to see you again too. I know I gotta, I gotta like a lean way up to see the TikTok uh, phone. <laughs> I need it like projected here so I can read it, read all the comments. Um, all right, I'm going to take this leader off. I don't really need it for this. Okay. Let's get the beginning here. So I'm gonna back tack this beginning, just that kind of locks it in place. So back tacking just, it's going forward and reverse. That's, that's it. And then going forward again. All right, let's sew all the way around. Okay, about a stopping about a quarter inch. Ah, keeps going further. Oh, uh, this does not have an automatic needle down position, and I want uh, my needle to be down so I can turn it. So I had to go back one. Oops, forgot to lift that up. All right, there we go. And if you don't have a perfect seam allowance on this, I don't think it matters. Remove that guy. All right, we're coming up to where all my clips are in spots that I wanna have perfectly lined up. So we're gonna slow this down in a moment here. All right, here's our first thing I wanna match up. Ooh, it's so bulky here. All right. So I'm gonna remove that clip and I'm actually gonna hold it down with my stiletto. I, I think that kind of helps. Like a, it's kind of like a pin. All right, so that's through our first one. Hopefully that went okay. All right, approaching the second one. This is actually getting stuck underneath, there we go. All right, get to the third. And one more. Okay. Rotating again. All right, so now we're at the bottom of the outside. Move that guy. Going all the way across this edge. Theoretically, I could, could have probably used a darker thread color, but eh, who cares? It's gonna be fine. There we go. All right, so now this side, I want all these pieces to match up again. It kind of feels, oh, no, we're fine. I was feeling like the seam had flipped underneath, but it, it's fine still. All right, next up. Couple more. 
So then we get to the fun part, which is turning this right side out, I think. All right, here's the last one. Oh no, Lynn, the internet was out. <laughs> it's not fun. All right, so I'm um, at the end here. This is where I get to leave my opening. Let's see, I think about a few inches is probably enough. Let's go right there. So just back tacking a little. All right, let's see where that gets us. Okay, so now we got our whole just big sewn thing here, and now I'm going to turn it right side out through that opening that we left. I'm going to just stick my hand in there and try and grab all the way to the other side here. Oops, my hand went in the pocket. That's not going to work. All right, I'm just kind of going to grab an end here. Oh, it's coming along so far, Lynn. Uh, Lynn says, I really want to see how this bag turns out. So uh, right now we got, there we go. We have the lining and here's the bottom. I'm kind of curious how we did on lining up these edges. Oh, heck yeah, look at that. Ooh, these are lined up pretty nicely. That one's maybe a little off, but not, not bad. Ooh, that one's good. There, so then this is gonna look like these stripes are just going all the way around. Yeah, we did a good job at matching those. So I'm gonna spend some time poking out the corners, not a ton of time, I'm just gonna do it with my finger, uh, poking out the corners of the outside here, but I'm not gonna worry about the lining piece doing that because we're actually gonna just stuff it right back in. All right, so I'm just kind of shaping this a little bit. So there's our front okay and uh, I'm gonna just poke these out a little bit these corners but what I want to do before going any further is I'm gonna close this hole so I'm just gonna go back to the machine I'm kind of pulling on the ends and kind of tucking in the edges we might need a clip let's see I'm gonna get my stiletto and just kind of push at the ends and let's just fold Fold those seam allowances towards the inside. This one just doesn't want to go very well. All right, I'm going to throw a clip right in the middle there. All right, so I'm just going to go at the, kind of the beginning of the opening. Um, so a little back tack and then to go all the way to the other side here. Let's stuff all these um, threads. I'm going to actually trim them. Trim the ends, the threads a little, and then just stuff them to the inside. There we go. All right, let's sew this. Still want to get these handles done today. We're almost to to that part. Um, maybe we'll just stay on for a little while to get this done. If it goes a little late. Okay, back tack. And then forward. We're just going where that opening is and sewing along that edge. And I think it went to about right to there. Okay, let's snip these little threadies out of the way 
and uh, we have ourselves basically a bucket at this time. Uh, so let's let's check that out. All right, so we can actually stuff this lining now into into the inside. So you, we could have made the handles and sewn them right in right away, but I kind of like the look of the handles on the outside. Ooh, get in there. So I'm trying to get like where these seams meet at the top here. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is we are going to sew along this edge just to kind of uh, hold all this in place. So kind of how we did the the top edge of the the pocket here, it's basically top stitching. So we're going to do that here too. But in general, that is our <laughs> pouch part. So I think we'll start on the back. I don't know if I really need to press before I do this. I think I'm going to just just so. So I'm going to kind of pull back the layers at the seams here and then I'm going to just sew all the way around. I think I'm, I'll start at a close to a seam. We'll start right here. All right, so I, I'm kind of going around my machine, but you can just kind of go up on top and just make sure that the underneath side is out of the way. But I think I actually have room to kind of go around. My opening's big enough here. All right, so I'm just going like eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch or so from the edge. I'm gonna do a little back tack. So uh, since I didn't press, I gotta just pay close attention to making sure that I'm kind of folding, folding the edges over. Tucking in that lining a little bit like how we did for the, the pocket. Alright, this is kind of a big seam we're going over right here. Eh, no problem. There, just making sure the seam is at the top. So I'm just doing a little bit. Moving it all around. And doing a little bit more. So we've gone completely around the top. I'm getting a little closer, more in than I wanted there. That's okay. Let's get back to the like eighth of an inch, not the sixteenth. All right, we're approaching that second fold here, that second side. Right through. We're getting there, almost to the other side here. There it is. So let's just back tack right there. All right, this top stitching is going to make this look and function. Um, it's going to just feel so much more finished here. Obviously, we don't have handles on it yet, but let's just snip these threads away. Ugh, let's get in here and snip. Okay, so there is the bag part. So see that top stitching is just holding that lining to the inside. So this is uh, the bag 
with the cute little lining on the inside. Cute little pocket. All right, so next up, we need to make some handles here. Uh, I have this green, and again, the way I wanted to do this, so we could have made the handles and sewn them right in here um, when we sewed the, um, the front to the lining piece and the back to the lining piece, but I wanted the style where you can actually see where it's like stays on the outside a little bit like this uh, versus where it's you know in the seam where it would be more more like so um, I kind of wanted them on the outside just to play up this green a little bit more so um, first of all how long should we make these I'm kind of hoping to just do whatever the length of this is so this is a fat quarter so those are typically like 21 inches wide which would give us like 21 inch handles. Let's just roll this up and see if we like this size. Cause if not, then I'm gonna have to piece together the handles and I kind of really don't want to do that. So the handles would probably in this scenario probably end up being around 20 inches. So it'd be like so. I mean, that's plenty decent, right? You can stick an arm in there, have it on the shoulder, right? This looks decent. I think we're gonna just go with this just cause it'll be an easy length to do. Okay, and then how wide? I mean, this is kind of cute about this width, isn't it? So let's, let's see what this is. It looks like about one and a half inches, but I'm wondering if we do it like just one inch straps. Yeah, one inch would be like right there. So this is a little wider than one inch, but I think we want to shoot for maybe one inch. So uh, yeah, I like that. So I, we need to make two of these. Obviously we have a front handle and a back handle. And uh, uh, nope, I'm not gonna do a box a box um, bottom for, for this. Um, so the lining you can pull out. You can tack the lining down to the corner like with a little bit of, of thread if you want. Um, but I just don't think it's that big of an issue. I'm gonna just leave it as is. All right, so I wanna, the way I wanna make these, I'm not gonna make it like a tube and turn it right side out. I'm gonna fold, um, fold the fabric inside and then fold it again. So this is actually gonna be like four layers of fabric. They're gonna be pretty sturdy um, little handles here. So I think for one inch handles, I'll need to cut a four inch width. And uh, um, yeah, then we'll cut two of those. I would try on seam a little, they seem a little short. Oh, I tried on. Um, well, I think it'll, I mean, like, I just kind of want to go with what I have here. I think you can definitely hold it on your hand. I mean, it's not going to be like one of those really, really long tote bag handles. It's just going to be, you know, a little sweet tote bag. Um, you could make it longer if you have a bigger piece of, of fabric. I think for this, this particular bag, we're just going to keep it like this just because it's about the, how big I can go with my particular fabric that I have here. Um, but yeah, you can definitely make it as long as you want. I think I'd still be able to put it over my shoulder. I mean, it'd be tucked under the armpit probably a little bit, but I think that's going to be kind of cute still. All right, so I'm going to press this and we're going to cut two strips. I'm just going to cut however um, long this is. I we could, we'll measure. I'll, and, you know, I'll trim off the selvages and stuff too. But I'm going to cut two four inch strips and then I will cross cut the little fuzzles off of it and just make them both really nice. All right, I think this is enough to fold or to cut these. Whoa, sorry. Hi. All right, I'm gonna lay this big one out. I'm actually gonna move this out of the way. I'm a little afraid I'm gonna cut into cut into our finished little guy there. All right, that looks pretty decent. I'm gonna need my large, larger ruler for this. And you know what, I think I'm gonna just use the markings on the mat for this too. Okay. 
Oh yeah, if this was a, a cross body thing, then uh, then I definitely need longer longer straps for sure. Yeah, so I would just say go whatever length you want. I mean, I I kind of like like how we just how I kind of bunched up the fabric and did a little test. Do a little test yourself, like pin pin a length of fabric or even a a length of um, yarn or something to to your um, to your bag and and just test it out like how does it feel putting it on and all that that's like the actual physical testing that's my favorite way to see if something's just right okay that's my first first cut and the next four inches I think this is long enough for like a little kid and stuff too, which, you know, for a trick or treat bag, ultimately it might go to a little kid. All right, this is scrap. And uh, let's just clean up these edges a little bit. So I'm actually gonna just fold, put these together and fold them in half. And then we'll trim them both at the same time and we'll assume they're close enough to the same length then at that point. I'm thinking these don't have to be super perfect. All right, I'm gonna just trim off that little edge and that is gonna be the length of our, of our handles. So what did this end up being? Let's actually measure. Okay, if we go from the top. So we are at, oh, we're at about 21 and a half inches. We're gonna actually tuck in the edges. Um, so we'll probably lose another like couple quarter of an inches. So ultimately we'll have 21 inch handles. So that's not bad. All right, we need to press these next. So let's, oh, the iron's going. There's a lot of prep for these little handles, but when it's done, it's done. So I'm gonna do them one at a time here. So we need to fold them in half, and then we're gonna fold them in half again. So we're gonna end up with like these one inch, uh, one inch pieces. So just kind of, we've made straps like this before. Um, this is kind of how we made all the straps for the masks that we made. We just made them a lot smaller than this. We started with one inch strips and then made them into like quarter inch size straps. This time we have four inch strips and we're ending up with one inch. All right. so in half the long way. So now if you have patterned fabric, uh, you're gonna want the pattern on the outside. So, so this would be the good, the right side right here. Okay, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna actually press both sides to the inside. We're basically making like a little bias tape. There's actually better ways of doing this. It's been a little while since I've done this, but Actually, we could maybe fold this and then fold it in right away. Eh, let's just do it this way first. I'm folding it towards the line and we are gonna give it a, another press. There are definitely tricks to this, but we're doing it this way now. So I'm just gonna keep kind of lining it to that center fold that we did. Gonna keep going down the edge. All right, got it that far. Let's shimmy it down and finish that fold to the middle and kind of get the whole length at once and give it a press. Yeah, that's looking decent. If you give a little pull on the end, that kind of helps, helps it to kind of get in place too. So let's try that, there we go.
All right, and then one more fold. So we're gonna match, match those edges up. And then this is gonna be like our final, our final fold. We got one last thing to do here, but I wanna get this fold first. Lots of little prep steps. Okay, the last thing I wanna do is, I might, I might actually sew this before moving on to this next one too. So the last thing I wanna do is, we have a raw edge, raw edges on these short little ends. I wanna just um, open this up, fold it up about a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna press it there quickly and then we're gonna fold in this shape again. And that way our edge is gonna be just tucked in for us already. So let's fold to the middle. So we'll have basically a nice finished edge and then fold it in half again, matching it up where it's already all, all folded. And there we are. I might even throw a clip on there for now, just to hold it together. There we go. So we have a nice folded under edge there. Let's do the same thing to the other side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew all the way down the edge um, that's folded. And I think I'm going to actually full sew it down the other edge too. Just that one's less mechanical. Um, it's just to kind of mimic this. And it's actually just to hold, hold that folds so it doesn't poop up again. Just just like how we did the top stitching before. Same same reasoning. All right, I can, and I can tell we might go a little late on this tonight, but um, it's gonna be good. Maybe we'll just do one handle tonight, then we can go through the whole process and I'll just um, work on that other handle myself or we can finish the other handle on on Monday. But yeah, I think maybe let's finish this handle, put it on the bag, and then we'll at least have one side done. <laughs> Normally I'd probably do both of these straps at the same time, but they're taking a little bit of time here. All right, so that's folded in. I'm just gonna clip that just to hold it in place temporarily. All right, so let's sew down the edge. I'm gonna sew the side that's kind of open first, and then I'm gonna sew the other side. I don't have to worry about this, this bottom edge because we're gonna actually sew that on later. Um, and just sewing the edge is gonna like keep it, sewing the edges is gonna keep it all in place anyway. All right, here we go. I'm gonna just do a little back tack. All right, now you're in the way there. I'm a little far over, that's okay. All right, so if I keep this taut, um, like kind of pull on it a little bit while I sew, uh, everything should kind of stay in place really nicely. Like my folds and everything should just be good. So nice. All right. I mean, theoretically, I could sew on the bottom here. Might as well. Let's just turn. I'll do the same at the top, too. Then I don't have to take it off the machine. I can just go over to the next spot. Right there. All right. Now we're going down the other side. Now this is just the fold, but it's gonna keep this fold in place. All right, let's get the bottom here. All right, and a little back 
tack and we have one strap done. Okay, and just because of time, I think we'll just attach this first strap, but the second strap you would do in the exact same way. Okay, so here's my other strap. Let's scooch that for now. All right, so here is the front of my piece. kind of deciding now where we want this strap. And we can measure or we can just eyeball um, somewhere maybe about there. Then we can have the strap a little bit longer. I think it's looking kind of cute. If we have the strap closer together, then we can fit more of our arm underneath. Actually, that's kind of cute right there. Let's think about it around there. I am gonna get a little ruler out so we can measure from the sides and kind of match this up a little bit. So I'm about, I'm about three inches or so away. So let's go like exactly three inches and let's go maybe an inch and a half from the top, so three inches from the side, an inch and a half from the top. That allows us to have a little bit of nice edge over here. I think I'm gonna just grab a clip. Make sure it's just kind of square. I think pins would maybe work a little bit better for this, but I'm just gonna get that square there and clip it in place. There we go. All right, let's get the other side. So three inches from the edge and about an inch, inch and a half from the top. So, oops, geez, there we go. One, two, three, an inch and a half. I think that's pretty good. We'll double check that they look equal. All right, how are we looking there? Does it look weird at all? Hmm, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like it's maybe over like maybe our pocket isn't centered anymore. Like I feel like, oh, I guess we're maybe over the edge of each of them a little bit. So if we go straight down, yeah, we're a little over the edge here. And I guess a little bit over the edge there. Yeah, it's not bad. I think that's probably a decent enough uh, position there. All right, so uh, um, what I'm gonna do now Oh yeah, that, how fast that mask guy did the, the straps. Yeah, that was crazy. So I think I am gonna get a pin. Let's just pin this bottom here. This actually might be a little difficult to pin through a lot of fabric here. And what we're gonna do is I want to sew basically a square with an X through it. And that's gonna make this super duper sturdy on here. So I think um, I'm going to kind of go over the same spot that I did here and then cross over at the top. You can maybe mark where you want to go, but I think I'm just going to go like a quarter of an edge or quarter of an inch from the top. So I'm going to go all the way around and then I'm going to go in uh, one diagonal, go back the other way, and then another diagonal. And that will be one. And I got to remember to get this other half out of the way. So, all right, let's do that. Make sure that my lining's out of the way. Let's do this with the first one here. So we're dealing with a pile of stuff. We're going to have to keep moving. I think I'm going to do um, where these 
like the strap, we gotta make sure that's out of the way, all of it. I'm gonna go where these clips are first. I think I'm gonna go just like a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I have that pin, so that should kind of do most of the work for me now. I'm gonna just remove this first clip. Yeah, let's go right there. Back tech. We're going through piles of fabric now. But I think this is a cute way to do straps. Um, it is that outside look, but I think that's kind of nice. All right, I think I'm going to go about right there. Okay, so I'm going to pivot now. So this is still, uh, like, I got to keep that lining out of the way, so I'm kind of mushing it out of the way. But trying to keep it flat, too. All right, let's go down here a little bit. All right. Turn again. To shimmy all of these things off of <laughs> off of my machine here. There we go. Give myself a little space. So my lining is still pushed out of the way. I don't want to be going through the back. So it's gonna feel like you're tying yourself up in knots, which you kind of are here but it'll all work out. Okay, now we're going back to where we started. And now I'm gonna do those diagonal lines. So you could actually draw the line from one corner to the other. I'm just gonna kind of aim. If it's not perfect, that's fine. That's where you get that cute little cross for the bag. That's actually adding like a ton of sturdiness to this. Let's go around this way. All right. And I might actually go back to where we started there too. Then I'd get an extra little stitching in on the top. All right, there's that X. And like I said, I'm gonna just get that top edge one more time, end where I started. And I think I might actually end here tonight, uh, but you would basically, let's, let's take this off and then take a look at it. You'd basically just do this for the other four parts. So let me just trim it up and we'll just look at it a little closer. Oops, hello. Um, we'll look at it a little closer. But it's it's cute. I think it looks nice, this type of handle. So it's a little extra work than just sewing it in right away, but we do get that cute like overlap. Um, I think especially for this, it's just it's just a nice little detail. So here is the X. You can see it on the, the inside as well, and that's just going to add a whole pile of sturdiness to our bag. So we basically do the same thing over here, do that X, and then we have the back strap as, as well to do. And then we got our cute little tote bag. I think it's I think it's um, pretty nice. It's, it's awfully cute here. So let me show you what it looks like. All right, so <laughs> we don't have it all sewn down yet and I'm, and I'm missing a handle, but uh, I think that's totally a decent length. Um, you know, it's not overly long. It's more just like to be cute and for a little kid, I think it would be extra sweet. And then we got our cute little pocket up front here, but there we are a little tote bag. So we didn't quite finish tonight, but 
Um, you know what? Maybe we'll keep going on this on Monday just to finish up these other little corners. Next week is kind of our free week. Um, but it would be nice to just sew the other four of these. So we can just like keep going, keep going on the handle. But um, I think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, we can give it a nice little press maybe too. And that's the deal. Oh cute, like how the fabric matches the threads. Yeah, I think, um, so here you really could choose a color thread um, more specific because the top stitching you do actually see. Uh, I'm just using that tan color, but I think it's it works just fine. But yeah, I think this looks really sweet, you guys. So thank you again for joining me tonight here. Uh, I really like where this is going. Definitely a totally legitimate way to finish an embroidery. I think it's just so sweet. Um, our little like Beetlejuice, little uh, scaredy cat uh, bag here. And again, I'm gonna work on, uh, Jenna's working on it now already even. She is going to put this into a blog post. So we will actually have the step-by-step -step of this with um, measurements and everything once we get totally done. So that is the plan. So thanks again, guys. And uh, I will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Good night.